Welcome back fellow moto vloggers, lovers of two wheels. Got another news clip I found interesting. This is by Larry Burns. It is titled, titled Trying to Find the Perfect Writing Space. Enjoy the scenery. It's a canyon. I think we're going down Highway 330 onto the uh, freeway. Alrighty, let's begin the reading. Could you spot a writer in the wild? The traditional montage includes someone typing merrily away on a keyboard behind a closed door with nothing to interrupt the transmission. Like clockwork or an assembly line, the finished prose goes from mind to fingers to screen to an audience in a smooth series of fortunate events, all predicted on the writer getting enough peace and quiet to invoke the ritual. In effect, fulfilling a vocation. This easy fantasy doesn't hold up to the real schedule of most writers. The kind of stasis may work for capturing the still shot of the novelist you'll find at a book cover in the lower left, but the modern writer is not sedentary. She often fits a writing project into several other passions, gigs, and social contract type requirements. Anyone who has written to a deadline while raising a child or caring for an aging parent understands the full contact nature of writing. Life slaps your notebook out of your hand, steals your pen, and generally talks to you incessantly about people you don't know. No, no, excuse me, about people you don't know doing things that do not matter. In response to these material facts, I think about writing spaces all of the time. When I teach, I remind students to consider their writing spaces. I even do writing exercises where we visualize the space. Where is it? What's in it and how often can you get there? We draw maps, we talk with our hands, we make plans for that space. We compile lists of supplies required in that space. The space must have dedicated hours of use. I tell them creating these spaces supports the development of your ideas. However, in truth, I would reveal that I came up with that make your space exercise while driving to class. I wrote it out on a napkin parked on the shoulder, not in park, just foot on brake napkin on steering wheel. I found that action breeds creativity, not sitting quietly in contemplation. I want that for my meditation space, but writing, I need just the right balance of motion, food, people, and shiny objects. I don't have a dedicated writing space. Rather, I'm dedicated fi to finding the space to write, wherever and whenever. Establishing the habits to better accommodate writing anywhere and any time accomplishes more than a dedicated room or special time each day, in my experience. The universe only provides so many free moments to write, which is why I wrote my first novella during office hours at my day job, mostly in three places, my cubicle, my car, and, co and coffee depot. I carry zero guilt for letting my employer pay me to complete that book. Creativity expressions... Creative expressions should always take precedence over employer productivity. In my mind, there are a few things more American than shirking your work duties and trying to write the great American novel. To do both simultaneously in patriot is patriotic, one could agree. At the office, I had com a computer, a printer, and lots of flexible time. Writing a book in a modern office is easy since the actions look like normal work functions. Reading, typing, and printing. You may even appear more productive than peers because you will not be sneakily clicking through your social media feed on your phone, but flagrantly typing away at the computer they told you to use. I found subversive action to be good for the cre creative muscles. Consider it a form of plyometrics for your problem-solving factory. My writing process in the car had two forms, one more active than the other. Lines or ideas that came to me as I drove were scribbled down on the backs of business cards or brochures. Recently, I even wrote the opening pages for a short story about trash on Wendy's on a Wendy's takeout bag. Forget, a ha forget hands at 10 and 2. Writers learn to keep their knees at 8 and 4. Less dangerous was editing in the car. For that activity, I would leave the office with an updated printout, find a shady place, do a few hours of edits, then return to the office to update the soft copy. Coffee Depot is where I wrote when I wanted a human interaction and caffeine. I found plenty to love at this convolu convoluted multi-story coffee shop at the corner of Mission Inn Avenue and Vine Street in Riverside. 
a converted train depot, it was huge, perhaps the largest footprint for a coffee house anywhere in the Inland Empire. Their sweet crepes, a specialty of the house, fueled many writing sessions, conversations, and people watching provided inspiration for some of the novel characters, and even a few plot points. Today, that employer I gave 80% to is bankrupt and in a fraud lawsuit with the federal government. My transportation has probably been re recycled into several other products. Coffee Depot had a great run and then closed its doors when the owners relocated to LA. By novella, but my novella lives on, at least on Amazon, and on Cellar Door Books' local author's shelf. And that's plenty of where and when for this writer.